Appa. All right. All right, Matt. You and I were meeting for the first time. I appreciate you coming on. Uh, I would love for you to tell us a little bit about what you're working on. Um, I know it's a prompting platform, right? We're both excited to be in the space of AI, but why, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and then how you came up with the idea and then what it is? Absolutely. Uh, Camille, thanks for having me on. Um, yeah, so you know, back at end of 2022, early 2023, you know, seeing ChatGPT come along um, and being able to actually engage with these large language models, uh, I, I found very exciting. And what I found was that I was using the same prompts a lot, or I was executing the same tasks a lot, or very similar tasks, right? Um, maybe I was summarizing something and I wanted it a, a specific way. Um, and, uh, and, and people were really sharing prompts a lot at that time. And so I wanted a place where I could share my prompts and not just like throw them in a Google doc and here have them or something like that. And so that's why I initially created pyro prompts is a place that I can put my prompts online so other people can use them. Over time, I found that um, I wanted a way to not just reuse an individual prompt, but like I wanted a way to quickly fill in placeholders in a prompt. And so I added some support for, I can essentially like fill in a form and it's gonna make the prompt the exact way I want it to. And then I can hop right into ChatGPT and start using that. As time okay. continued to go on, I was thinking like, well, I don't, why do I need to be the one pressing the buttons? The computers are great at doing that kind of stuff. I, and I have a background in you know, software engineering and automation, been doing this for 15 years. And so I was like, let me build the automation tooling for this. Um, and so that's what I did. So I can make it trigger based on an event, like filling out a form, or I can make it trigger based just on a schedule, which is really useful if I'm trying to do something like every single week. And then, uh, then I feel like it really just blew up. Um, I started getting more people using it and uh, it was really great to get some user feedback and be able to uh, build more functionality for the types of things people were doing. For example, uh, some people were trying to leverage AI to, you know, create better health habits. Maybe that's like working out. Maybe that was like diet habits and stuff. And so being able to have like your own personalized AI coach for some of these things, people could already go into conversations, but if you're going into a conversation every time, it's it, it, who's doing the work here. Like I'm going doing the work, I'm making the prop, put into AI, doing these conversations. I'd rather have AI do the work for me. And, uh, and so that's what we essentially allow it to do. It runs the prompts and it'll send you an email. Um, so I don't need to come to the platform every single week to run something. I just get an email, it's personalized information. If I wanna go change something with the prompt, I can hop back into power prompts and change something and rerun it and stuff like that. But um, yeah, and then we integrated data and RSS feeds and a uh, whole bunch of other stuff that's now, you know, I feel like really bearing fruit. That's, these days. that's interesting. So you kind of took it a step beyond just getting the output from the language model, but actually making it easier to integrate in your daily life in that specific case. Um, That's right. Uh, just a quick question. In general, where do you see people making the most mistakes when it comes to talking to those language models, uh, maybe prompting? What would you, especially at a beginner level, what would you, what would be your advice be to people that just get started with things like ChatGPT? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think the thing I see most from people is they, expect a lot out of the large language model without giving it a lot. Um, and you, you see people just start and say, you know, give me marketing ideas. Well, if you don't tell the LLM what your business is, what marketing ideas have worked well for you in the past, who your target audience is, it's going to give you things that aren't really relevant. So people will put in what I think to be a, an under uh, fulfilled prompt and they will expect something good back. And then they'll be disappointed that it's not there. Like ah, AI is not that good. It's like, no, like, it takes work to create the prompt and do this thought up front. And then it's really great on the other side. So that's what I see the most. Gotcha. Makes sense. And I see that I can only uh, second that, by the way. So really, absolutely true. The, the expectations, sometimes they get so hyped up from the, the hype about around AI. Then you come in with high expectations. You don't know really exactly what it's there to do. And then you end up judging a fish by its ability to climb a tree and you're disappointed, right? <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're using the tool the wrong way. And there's something that I've seen some people do uh, more recently is um, when they aren't providing that full context, they ask the LLM to ask them questions, mm. which I think is a really helpful way to do it. Where it's like, I'm not gonna come in with a ton of context. You ask, you ask me what I need to provide to you, and then we're, we're gonna fill this out. Uh, I find that to be a, a good process for people who are 
newer to LLMs and maybe don't know everything they want to have in their prompt. There's a lot of great prompt frameworks out there. Um, and I think that if you're able to follow one of those, great. But if you're not, just ask the LLM what questions uh, it has for you, and then it can then provide better. Yeah, information. great, great strategy, great advice. It, it, I remember when I was in that phase, it often times took a while for me to make it click and like, wait, I can just ask, <laughs> you know, because sometimes there are those things that we don't know that we don't know. And, you know, that can be helped with that as well. So um, why don't you just take us through your platform? If, can you yeah. share the screen? Absolutely. Yeah, let me try to share. Let me see if this works. All right, so I'm gonna do this infinity. Oh, okay. Right here. Maybe not. Uh, <laughs> all right, there you can go. you see my screen? Yeah. Uh, I'm in Pyro Prompts. Cool. Um, so this is Pyro Prompts. Uh, the uh, like kind of the landing page. If you're, you know, this, this is what you see when you when you first come here. Uh, the place that I spend the most time is either uh, here, looking through different prompts that I have, and uh, you know, one of the things that Recently, I created like an about us card um, that is like uh, for for stores um, or for products and stores. Stores that sell like a lot of different uh, like vendor products, mm -hmm. and so somebody could come in here and say, "Okay, well, here's like a great prompt that I spent a while thinking about. Like, here's the different inputs I'd want to have for this. Uh, a little bit specific to like what the output is. Um, so I'm able to put in something like, uh, you know, here's my." Uh, I run an AI automation business. Uh, target market is uh, AI, uh, let's say business professionals. Um, and, and so th this prompt templating has been really helpful for me because then I can fill this out in a form way and I know that it's going to fit the exact like method that I created the prompt for and then I can just copy it and dro drop it in chat GPT mm -hmm. if I want. Or I can click on this and it'll bring me right over to ChatGPT with this all filled out and good to go. That can okay. be really helpful for just like getting the ball rolling, right? And so I, I found myself just making prompts that I, if I wanted to reuse something, you just put like these little square brackets here. Uh, and then I can you know, be good to go right away with uh, filling this out. And then from these prompts, like, like I was saying before, if I want to take this to the next level, really, I want to automate this maybe in some way. Um, and so if maybe I want something like every single week, I want to run this on a schedule or just want to run this manually. Um, I can uh, have this all run completely within Power Prompts. Let's say I want to run this manually. I've got a project here already called a demo project, uh, which I can then create this, hop over to the workflow. Um, and it's going to uh, have a couple different, uh, it's got like a form here for actually filling out these parts, uh, the text area. Um, and then actually executing the prompt. And so I can do something like you know, fill this out and actually like run it you know, just really quick. So let's you can it. run this and then uh, can you use ChatGPT search with that as well as a prompt and then get the email results or? Um, these, it, it doesn't connect with ChatGPT search. It's kind of their uh, like hosted solution. Oh, okay, uh, gotcha. It connects to their APIs uh, and it connects to, um, open AI. So we got like all the chat GPT models. Got it. Um, we have all the llama models through Grok and meta AI. We have Grok beta through mm. X AI. And we have um, a couple llama models through AWS bedrock. What do you know if perplexity offers that? And perplexity does and uh, perplexity and anthropic uh, are both ones that I'm looking at integrating. With but I mean, X perplexity specifically with access to the internet as an API. Yeah. The um, reason why I'm asking is what I think, which will be super cool as a, like, I would love to really specify a prompt, uh, like you said, right, about, let, let's say I want to know the late, the AI, top AI news from the last seven days uh, geared towards business. And if I could set that up somehow, refine the prompt a little bit more, and then have it do almost like an agent do a search and then just email me the results. Um, would that be something that's possible now or maybe in the future on that platform? Uh, 
so through perplexity, yeah, that would be a, that would be something that we could definitely uh, mm. add through here though. Let, let me just, um, so I've done some things with RSS lookups and we also have uh, these data set lookups. So I can, uh, in here, I can look up info where uh, we can set an RSS feed. And this has been really helpful for doing exactly what you're talking about. So I can like, you know, go find a, a news platform that's putting out mm -hmm. these um, like news articles about AI and put that RSS feed in here and it will bring it in like through rag methods and oh. make the whole thing available to a prompt. So I can first look up RSS. I don't have a, a good RSS feed here to throw okay. in there. But then the next step I could, you know, actually execute a prompt and say, you know, based on news, three things relevant to my business to talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, this has been really helpful for, um, you know, I'll do things uh, like um, creating like weekly platitudes or um, like stories to talk about. Uh, it, also, there's a couple brands that I manage their marketing for, and it's really helpful for them if there's like an event coming up um, mm. to be able to like automatically bring that in and inform the brand is like, Hey, here's like things you could put in your newsletter uh, that you can put out. So it kind of gets a, a lot of that upfront work out of the way. It can even like propose a full draft for the newsletter that they can say, yeah, this is pretty good. Here's some things I want to tweak. Um, but it gets like a lot of that leg work out of the way. Hmm. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. I would love to see how that evolves. Cause, uh, I actually almost like the RSS version better because you can more clearly define what you want your sources to be, I guess. Because every time when I use search, it, it kind of goes into, yeah, it's very broad and then it gets way too narrow, you know, so it's good to have a little bit more control about it. Okay. Yeah, I think one of the challenges in some of the platforms is like the lack of control in how some of those things work. And that was something that I, I think if you want the reproducibility or that level of quality that you need to have the predictability of mm -hmm. how it's going to work, how it's going to look something up, it's going to look up that stuff the same every time. It's going to pass the exact prompt that you want to the LLM every time. And I think that's like a really important way. Um, so we have these, this ability to look up uh, in an RSS feed, but we also have data sets. Um, that we bring in here. And uh, there's three different data sets uh, currently that are public. Um, I have a couple other ones that are in beta right now um, that I'd like to make public, but we got one for Polymarket, which is just like, here's some events that are going on that people are betting on, um, some stock market information uh, through a partner of ours, Freak Signals, and another partner of ours, Ask News, which uh, kind of has some of the stuff that you were just talking about. So let, let's mm -hmm. actually check this out here. And so there's... Um, so we can like search within this data set and it's going to, here's like what's going on in the tech sector and it can inject these, like this is how it would return in a RAG format mm. um, and would be able to inject into your prompts. And so I can actually search these data sets here and say, oh, you know, what else would I want to search here? Do I want you know, to narrow in on something more around, you know, I, I just searched AI here, but maybe there's something more specific to search here. Um, and these data sets are you know, updated asynchronously and hosted by Pyro Prompts. But I feel like that is kind of the other side of it of like not doing a live lookup uh, to the internet, but bring in data that then we are able to search. Got it. Okay, cool. Well, do you have any other features you want to mention there or anything that's in the development? By the way, did you develop this traditionally or with AI or both? <laughs> uh, this was developed uh, traditionally and using AI in uh, my IDE uh, for development. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah. Got it, got it. And so, uh, yeah, there, there's kind of one other thing I want to touch on. So mm -hmm. we, we have this notion of projects and something that I find to be challenging sometimes with conversational based AI is that if I want to share like a snippet between different prompts, um, it, I, I'm, I end up doing a lot of copying and pasting and like, I'm not a data uh, like entry person, right? I, or I don't want to be. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I created this notion of snippets where I could say, you know, target audience, uh, business, business professionals aged, let's say 25 to 40, 
period type set. Right, and I, I can create all these different snippets and then use them in all of the different workflows that I have. And, and if I update them in one place, then all of a sudden they're updated in every other automation workflow. So I can create uh, like product list, say, you know, automation, automation platform, uh, AI, AI workshops, AI custom development, products that I have. And then I can actually, um, you know, create a workflow that would be like create, um, actually I've got, I've got a new feature here for, uh, creating a workflow based entirely on just a description of what I'm trying to do. So I can say like, use the target audience to, uh, I want to use this to create a custom, custom marketing plan. Let's just say, um, which then will automatically create this workflow just for the target audience and everything. Here, yeah. And will reference this target audience, mm. uh, which is a really handy way to, um, yeah, because then I can theoretically just run this and see what it does. These live demos can always be tricky. Yeah, I know. Um, I know. But it's, uh, it, it's a nice way configuration of some of these automated things uh, using forms, I feel like is a, is a way of the past mm. and there's new ways where using AI, you should be able to just click and oh, there we go. It worked. Um, and I can view this all in markdown format or like just the, the plain text of the returns, right. which I think is like open AI offers that. And I think that it's like a more common thing to see markdown is like the interface for AI. Mm -hmm. Um, so I can generate this and then if I decide to come back in here and say, or if I clone the whole project, which is also totally doable. And instead I say, you know, for instead of business professionals, let's say like health gurus, um, aged, let's say like 15 through 30, you know, um, and then if I come back to the custom marketing plan, I can, execute again, it's going to be updated. I don't need to go back into this, uh, into the configuration here. Right. I can like change the entire setup, uh, just by changing the snippets, like the context. Got it. Yeah. And, I, and as we were saying before, one of the most important things for improving AI is to give it rich context, mm -hmm. uh, tell it everything that you have going on. So I think that this makes it a lot easier to manage these things and you can manage all your snippets and then like rerun your whole set of workflows. Mm. Um, and I've got some that have like dozens of steps here, like, Defining your target audience, niching down, generating yeah. good products for them, their challenges, and like kind of working through up to some of those things. So, yeah, that's very cool, man. I, I appreciate you showing us this. I really think that, right? I mean, maybe it's just the nature of the beast right now. These interfaces on ChatGPT or Claude are way too simplistic for me. I personally I love the the project feature in Claude. I use it every day. For, I got like twenty different projects. Uh, but they're all also way too simplistic. I actually like this more traditional format where you see on the left side, you know, you can kind of navigate through it and sort it a little bit better there. You have it just like one long stream per project. I I would love to see that a little bit more in those. But until then, I guess people can use your platform. Um, what's the URL? It's pyroprompts.com? Pyroprompts.com. All right, cool. Well, thank you so much, man, Jason. Memoir. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's funny, you're not, you're not I was like, who does he remind me of the whole time? No, man. Um, I appreciate that again. I was uh, I was called Drogo one Halloween. So oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, to... there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's not bad. Uh, anyway, man, flatter, really appreciate that. I hope we stay in touch and you can, uh, where can people find you uh, directly if they have questions? Yeah, uh, I'm Ferrants, F-E-R-R-A-N-T-S, uh, on uh, Twitter or X and on LinkedIn. Uh, my name is Matt Ferrante. Um, you can find me on Pyroprompts, Matt at Pyroprompts.com. Um, I also do AI consulting and AI custom development. So if you have any, uh, if you're trying to build AI agents, you know, I do a lot of that stuff. So definitely hit me up. That sounds awesome. Thank you, Matt. Really appreciate you. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Camille. Okay. Thanks.